Hello, Troy Sembassini here. Thank you for dropping by. In this video, I'm gonna answer a really crucial question a lot of DIY investors probably have on the tip of their tongues right now is, why is everyone investing in regional Queensland? This video, is there's gonna be a ton of value and I'm gonna break down various reasons as to why a lot of people are buying regional Queensland, investing in regional Queensland, DIY investors, institutional investors, big buyers agencies. You'll see exactly why they are so bullish on the regional Queensland property market. But before I dive in guys, please like the channel. I'm gonna be putting out a ton of new content and a ton of value in relation to the regional Queensland property market going forward. It will be awesome if you can click like and subscribe. Cheers guys, I hope you get some value out of what's gonna be covered in this video. Super pumped. Okay, let's dive straight in. The first reason why a lot of people are bullish on the regional Queensland property market, why it's been such a good place to invest over the last 24, 18 months, 12 months, three months even if you've been following the purchases that I make. The first reason is that we have a huge supply shortage in regional Queensland. There is a big crisis across the country. There is a massive shortage of housing. Queensland has a big shortage of housing. And then obviously that then flows on to regional Queensland. Some of the latest data that I read, we have a shortfall of around 8%, which accounts for roughly 80,000 dwellings that need to be supplied in the regional Queensland property market to cater for the current demand or need. So there is this huge, I suppose, unmet need in regional Queensland of housing. And when there is an unmet need, that has a tendency to put pressure on house prices because there is a supply shortage that puts downward pressure on housing. So that means that house prices would go up, right? Because there's just so many people fighting for the existing stock that's available here rather than, you know, the market being injected with new stock that caters for that demand. So that is a huge reason, guys, why regional Queensland has been so popular. And when you look at property investing at a fundamental level, it all really boils back to supply and demand. When you have limited supply and high levels of demand, that could generally only mean one thing, prices have to increase because of that supply and demand imbalance. I'll leave some resources and links in the comments so you can check out and cross-reference some of the information and data that's out there that basically highlights this massive supply shortage issue we have in regional Queensland. But that's the big reason why a lot of people are investing here and that's the number one on my list today. Okay, the next thing on the list is population movements. Now this has certainly been a key driver of house price growth. I've certainly seen this on the ground in regional Queensland, particularly during COVID-19 in 2019 and 2020, when there was a mass exodus from places like Sydney, Melbourne due to lockdowns, we had a lot of people fluctuate to regional Queensland looking for that alternative lifestyle, fast-tracking retirements, and we've seen population surge during that stage uh, in 2021 and 2019, 2022 parts of, however, the latest ABS data shows that in Queensland alone last year, the 2021 to 2022 financial year reported net migration of around 100,000 people. And a large portion of that net migration can be attributed to the interstate fluctuation or population movements from people moving from other states. The biggest state I believe has been New South Wales as well as Victoria. And then there's been still a trickling from the other states and territories across the country into Queensland. So 100,000 people migrated to Queensland alone last year. And then obviously there is still a large percentage of external migration, those that are coming from overseas 
and into Queensland, right? So why I'm using Queensland as a generalization here in terms of that population pressure or that population growth is that when we have Queensland growing as a whole, that's certainly then going to flow into the regional markets because what we've seen with the data is that a large portion of the net migration that does come into Queensland, probably the best part of 60% of it, actually does funnel into South East Queensland. So Brisbane, the Gold Coast, and the Sunny Coast make up a large portion of that net migration into Queensland. And then the remaining people tend to sort of, you know, go out into the regional areas and other parts of Queensland, right? But the large population increases in Queensland can be attributed to the Southeast Corridor. One of the things I want to say was that when we see a large increase in population movements, particularly into Brisbane, the Sunshine Coast, on the Gold Coast, we actually see that having a chain reaction across Queensland, right? So when you have a large amount of people inbound into the Gold Coast, for example, long-term residents from the Gold Coast are packing up shop and going further north into regional markets like Bundaberg, like Harvey Bay, like Cairns and Townsville. So when you have population movements at an aggregate level across Queensland, we're seeing population, I suppose, ripple effects happening along the Queensland East Coast. A bit of a chain reaction where people would come into the Brisbane area, the Gold Coast area, and the Sunshine Coast area, and then force a lot of those people that are long-term residents there to, to move into more regional markets. So regional markets and regional Queensland have gotten a lot of the population movements of those people that have been part of a chain reaction and then the residual population balance of those that aren't moving necessarily into Southeast Queensland in itself. So you can see why regional Queensland from a population point of view and from an investing point of view has been so well because of these population movements continues to put pressure on those housing markets. And when you have such a large influx of people into smaller regional hubs, it's like throwing a boulder into a pond and it just having a massive ripple effect in terms of the local property market. Whereas when you go to markets such as Brisbane, the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast, it's more like throwing a pebble in because those markets can cater for uh, the additional amount of people. Whereas regional Queensland, on the other hand, it's like throwing a boulder into a small pond or a lake and it's going to have an absurd effect on the local property market. So that's one of the big reasons why a lot of people are so bullish on regional Queensland. Institutional and investors as well as big buyers agencies are aware of this data and are going very hard on the regional Queensland property market because they can see the extreme supply shortages we have and the population pressure and then what that's likely to do to house prices going forward. Again, I'll leave some resources and some data in the comment section so you can cross-reference a lot of the things that's out there and what people are saying about population movements, real data, ABS data, as well as data from economists, etc. You can have a look at that, guys. But that is number two on my list, population movements. Okay, the next thing on my list is infrastructure spending. I know it's a bit of a property investing cliche that we all need to look at infrastructure spending in particular case before we pull the trigger. But in regional Queensland, infrastructure spending is through the roof and it is certainly having an effect on local housing markets. A lot of the time, certain infrastructure projects actually do not even move the dial on local property markets. You have to look at infrastructure investment or projects on a case by case basis because it's not about the infrastructure project, it's about the jobs it creates and then the stability of those jobs as well as the lifetime of those jobs. So if an infrastructure project, for example, is in Townsville and they're building a ring road, for example, what does that do in terms of job? It may create some temporary employment, it might inject the market with some money locally for a short period of time, but what's the long-term jobs that would come out of, let's say, a ring road for a Townsville-based market. Not a lot, right? But the reason why I want to dive into infrastructure spending today is that there is a lot of infrastructure investment in Queensland that is long-term in health, in education, 
and energy, renewables, right? That creates a lot of long-term job and prosperity for the regional Queensland economy and the various communities that these projects are happening in. So billions of dollars, both federally and state funding, is being poured into regional Queensland, and that is causing a lot of people to be very bullish on the regional Queensland property market because a lot of the infrastructure spending, as I alluded to, is in health, is in education, is in certain sectors of the economy, industry, where there is going to be a lot of long-term job creation, a lot of stability, creating a lot of stability in various regional Queensland property markets. So that is a big reason why a lot of people are bullish on regional Queensland. I know a lot of the big regional hubs like Cairns, Townsville, Mackay, Rockhampton, Bundaberg, they've all got multiple billions of dollars being poured into those markets with various infrastructure projects. And that, and then that investment is having an adverse effect on the local housing market. And that's where a lot of investors are capitalizing on the spend that's happening on the ground in these locations. Again, it's very difficult to go through each, I suppose, location and what their infrastructure investments are. I'll leave a bunch of links uh, in the comment section so you can go away and look at where the government dollar is going, where's industry money being spent, and what are the various infrastructure projects that are happening around Queensland. I'll leave a couple of links in the comment section. Go ahead and look at those but yeah guys this is a big reason why a lot of people are bullish on regional Queensland is it's huge in infrastructure spending right not only right now but going forward for the next 10 20 30 years interesting number four on my list today is lifestyle so just personally I have seen this firsthand a lot of people move from Sydney from Melbourne to regional Queensland, places like Cairns, places like Townsville, places like the Whit Sundays, places like Yapoon on the Capricorn Coast, Harvey Bay, Bundaberg. We have helped a lot of people move from those markets into these areas chasing lifestyle amenity. And it's been a key reason why populations have increased in these markets, as well as why house prices have went up because people are chasing the lifestyle that exists in regional Queensland. Nice beaches, warm weather all year round, smaller populations, less traffic, etc. The list goes on and that's been a key reason why I suppose we've seen the regional Queensland property market surge and a lot of investors have identified that there is this lifestyle desire and they're looking to capitalise on it. Obviously, it's very hard as an investor to get data around people's decision to move to a location for lifestyle reasons. It's very hard to capture the start. It's more of a qualitative data point. But if you've got eyes and ears on the ground with various agents, or if you are an investor and you've picked up a phone and spoke to friends and family that you know in a regional location, they'll give you some insight as to who are the people that are moving those locations and why, and you can start to really collect some good qualitative data that suggests that people are moving to these locations for lifestyle reasons. But yeah, guys, lifestyle is one of the big drivers of the regional Queensland property market and investors are capitalizing on that. Okay, number five, guys, and this is a big one, affordability, affordability. We've seen a lot of people and we've worked with a lot of investors that are buying in regional Queensland on the basis, purely on the basis that they just can't afford to park their money elsewhere. Places like Melbourne, places like Sydney now are way too expensive to even invest anymore. So people are looking at alternative markets like Queensland and regional Queensland where their dollar can go a lot further. So this has been a key reason why a lot of investors are buying here, right? Because you can buy in certain markets property still for under 300,000. Property still for under 400,000. Property still for under 500,000. 
up to around six, seven hundred thousand dollars. A lot of people can still buy here and invest as well as get good yields associated with their investment here because of the affordability metric, the affordability curve. I'd probably say at an aggregate level across regional Queensland, the average purchase price for a property would probably still sit under $500,000, which is only the best part of four to five times the average income in regional Queensland, whereas parts of Sydney and Melbourne, the average house now costs over a million dollars and it's like 10 to 12 times the average household income. So yeah, a lot of people are buying here because they see that it's not only affordable, but it also has great upside potential because that entry price is so low at around three, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars and there's just so much wiggle room for that property and these markets to potentially grow and catch up to capital cities. So yeah, guys, affordability has been a key reason why a lot of people are investing here in regional Queensland. And we see it all the time, like I work with uh, a lot of people that even move intra-regionally from different parts of Queensland. Even I work with families that are based on the Gold Coast that have gone, oh, I can, I can save here for the next five years and spend my $800,000 on the Gold Coast and get a small townhouse. Or I can go to a regional market like Bundaberg and live on a thousand square meters in a six bedroom home with a big shed and a pool, right? So people have identified that their money can go further in regional markets and it's causing them to start to make those conscious decisions. People in Sydney and Melbourne that have sold a $1.1 million house or $1.2 million house are then going, ooh, rather than buy another house in Sydney or Melbourne, I'm gonna go spend that $1 million to get a waterfront, direct beachfront property in a regional market. So it does have a lot of really good affordability factor to it, regional Queensland, and it's causing a lot of people to enter into this market to put pressure on house prices, drive them up, and investors, the sophisticated and the smart ones have identified these key parts of regional Queensland and are capitalizing on it. So yep guys, affordability, a big one. And the last one on the list today guys is strong yields. So this is a big reason why a lot of people are investing here in regional Queensland. They're chasing yields and they're chasing positive cash flow. That's one of the great things about parking your money in regional Queensland is that you could potentially have an asset that's not only returning you positive cash flow, but it's going to cost you nothing to hold and the affordability plays a large role in these yields right because on a five hundred thousand dollar purchase as an investment for example you could rent the property out for around five fifty to six hundred dollars a week and it's going to give you a rental yield above six percent and that will equal positive cash flow in today's lending environment right so this is why a lot of investors are choosing to park their money in regional Queensland here because they've identified that the yields are much stronger here because property is more affordable, right? Because if you bought a 800, 900, a million dollar house in Sydney or Melbourne, the yields most likely will be around two or 3% and it's gonna cost you a ton of money to hold that asset where you're gonna be dipping into your back pocket in order to hold that asset. Whereas people in, are investing in regional Queensland because they've identified that, hey, I can buy a $300,000 house and it's gonna cost me nothing to hold. So I get that additional cash flow and then I can potentially get the upside of capital growth as well. So strong yields, guys, are a big reason why a lot of people are investing in regional Queensland. There you go, guys. That's my top six reasons as to why people are investing in regional Queensland. As I said, I will leave a bunch of links of resources and tools that you could look at to help you go through each of the line items to come up with your own conclusion as to what's happening in terms of population, what's happening in terms of infrastructure, what's happening in terms of affordability in regional Queensland. But I wanna finish on saying that 
all of this right, if we all threw them into a pot and we started boiling them up, these are the key ingredients to give you capital growth. And that's inevitably what a lot of investors are chasing is capital growth, right? And if you cluster all of those things together, you throw them all into a pot and these, I believe, are the key ingredients that will give Queensland and regional Queensland a lot of the capital growth investors are chasing. Thanks guys, my name is Troy Simbassini. If you've liked this video and if you've got some value, please give it a like. Leave any comments in the comment section, any questions you have. I'll be more than happy to try and get around and answering those as well. But yeah guys, if you can subscribe to the channel, I'm gonna be bringing out a ton of value over the next few months. Gonna give you more insight as to what's happening in regional Queensland, gonna dive into certain individual markets, into individual suburbs, and give you the tools, resources, and information, knowledge and perspective you need to navigate this marketplace. Cheers guys, and thank you for watching.